Good evening and welcome back to Byline. This is our public affairs show here at Amherst Media and it's a show co-sponsored by the Amherst League of Women Voters. And we've now had, I think, all of our counselors on and we've had some other guests come in to tell us about some of the work that they're doing that the council will be making decisions around. And today we have a very special guest. Uh, he, he's a singular figure in town because we have only one of them. <laughs> our town manager, Paul Bockelman. So thank you for joining us this evening. Thanks for inviting me, Stan. And so, uh, as you know, we're trying to help people understand what's going on with our transformation of our from our old form of government to our new form of government. So this is your first appearance. We mm -hmm. hope it won't be the last. Um, and I just want to start at the very beginning. So, you know, there's a saying in politics, uh, uh, where you stand often depends upon where you sit. Mm -hmm. Where are you sitting these days? <laughs> So we have a new town room organized specifically for the council, and I sit in a separate, some people call it the penalty box, because it looks like <laughs> a hockey penalty box. And the town clerk, or the clerk to the council, and I sit in that, um, separated from the legislative body, which is the town Why? council. In the previous form of government, the town manager sat next to the chair of the select board, and uh, it was part of the executive of the select board. But clearly, the new charter has it as being that the town council is the um, legislative body. And we had conversations about this. Should the town manager sit next to the president of the council or not? And it was, to me, it was like um, that the town council is the preeminent body in the town. The town manager is appointed and served, serves the council and should sit separate, but, be at, but has to be present at every meeting. So you can be a resource to them. Right. You can hear the debate, mm -hmm. you can take the notes, mm -hmm. you can get your direction, Correct. and you know what's going on. Exactly. So um, how has it been different in this new role for you, mm -hmm. uh, given, as you said a minute ago, that uh, you were part of the executive with the select board. It was a shared responsibility. Mm -hmm. But now you, under the charter, have a lot of the powers of the executive. The council has a few that are unusual for a council, mm -hmm. but fine as a legislative body. Right. But they mainly focus on policy and legislation. Mm -hmm. And you're responsible for most of the executive functions. Mm -hmm. So how is it different in your role, um, having now served three whole months right. in our new form of <laughs> right. government? Right. So it's a, it's a wholly different form. Um, all the power emanates from the voters. That vote, all that power is then vested in the council. The voters also elect the board of library trustees and school committee and a couple others, but really the power does, devolves, devolves into the council and that's where the power lay, list, lives. That power then, uh, they appoint the executive and they can determinate the executive at, at will. Mm -hmm. they, um, they, they are serve as the board of water sewer and sewer commissioners. They serve as the board of, uh, they take care of the public ways. Um, they have an appointing authority of the finance committee, and what's new is that any department head that I appoint it goes to the town council for review and approval. Okay, and so speaking of making appointments, mm -hmm. tell us what's different. Who are you appointing now yes. versus the council, mm -hmm. and how's that all working? Yeah, so, so the charter in its uh, wisdom placed the major policy-making boards as appointed by the council. That would be the planning board and the zoning board. There's a couple other, the participatory budgeting commission and the ranked choice voting um, committee. Um, but those are sort of one-offs. These are the, the major policy making boards for the town. All of the others um, are appointed by the town manager. That's not so different. In the prior form of government, the select board, there are about, say there's 39, 40 different boards out there. The selectmen, the board of select, the select board appointed about half of them, and the town manager appointed about half of them. So uh, now uh, the town manager has the half that that I appointed previously, plus the ones that the select that the, uh, town, the select board had appointed. So there's more appointments. Over 200 people serve in this in, uh, as volunteers on these committees, mm -hmm. um, but the major ones, the, you know, the major land use ones that have permanent really have permanent impact on the town or appointed by the council. Okay, but again, who makes most of the appointments these days? The town manager makes most of the appointments, okay. subject to 
review by every appointment is subject to review by the council. The council can accept, reject, or do nothing. Got it. Okay. So that's a lot more power in the hands of the uh, in the hands of the town manager, but it's ultimately checked by the power of the right. council. So there are many. There, fifteen of the boards uh, were appointed by the town manager without checks yep. by anybody. So mm -hmm. there's some. I mean, uh, reduction of power to the, the town power manager in that as well. Way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And and all the town, all the town department heads were appointed by the town manager mm -hmm. without review. These are all now reviewed by the council. Okay. And speaking of appointments, because we focused on the show uh, a couple of times on mm -hmm. this whole area. Yeah. So uh, the finance committee is fast at work already on the budget mm -hmm. with with the town manager and the town departments, and there are, if I'm remembering correctly, four. Uh, resident members will be appointed to that council who are non-voting. Is it four or two? Well, they they have, I think they're settling on three. They're settling on three. Okay, <laughs> but it, that's going Splitting to be splitting the difference. I'm not. That's <laughs> going to go to the council at some point for review. Okay. They have the five councilors who serve, and then there's there's a provision for non-voting members. And the first iteration was they have four non-voting members. I think the um, finance committee has been at their last meeting on Tuesday. Um, <clears throat> reviewed that charge and came out, um, I wasn't there for that, this part of the meeting, came out with three members as being the optimal number for the. For them. So they're advancing three, the council will have to approve that. Right. At that point, anybody who wants to be in one of those three seats gets to go to the town website, find the appropriate uh, thing to click on, right. and you'll find the application yes. to volunteer. It's not an application specifically mm -hmm. for the finance committee but a general volunteer application so the, form? So we changed the, it used to be the, called the citizen activity form. We, yeah. I changed that to say community activity form because you don't have to be a citizen to participate in local government. And so we, but, and we changed some other things where you can click any committee that you'd like to serve on. You can click an area if you want to do sustainability or finance. And you don't know exactly what committee that hits. Or you can say, I'm just one of volunteers someplace. And, and you can check as many of those boxes as you want. And that comes in, we start to review all those applications. Very good. So it's not too late no. if our viewers are sitting there thinking, I'd like to be a non-voting member of the Finance Committee. Do you think those appointments are going to be made in time for that to work for this year? Or are we kind of getting late in the process? Yeah, I don't think the intention is for it to be done for this year. I think they. Um, okay intend for it to happen early enough so they can start on July 1 for the FY21 budget. Sounds good. It may be a little bit off on the language right in the uh, in the um, uh, charter, it's, although the charter might say up to four and therefore it, zero the is... The charter says may, may appoint residents. They don't have to appoint any residents to the finance oh, committee if they choose not to. Excellent. So the fact that they're vo voting hopefully to do that, mm -hmm. uh, I just gave a bias try to be unbiased, but is consistent with the vision of the charter, right. which is you really want to engage people mm -hmm. in as many ways and opportunities as possible. Right. But because it's May, it doesn't have to happen this year, mm -hmm. but this year they'll get it all set up so that it'll be ready for next year. Right. That means the people who apply and get named will start at the very beginning of the budget process, mm -hmm. not be jumping in in the middle, right. which is actually not a really great thing. Correct. Because they're already going to be behind mm -hmm. if they're appointed in a month or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so anything else uh, we should talk about on appointments? Uh, well, you, you got some hot stuff out here that the folks need to know about that you're I, looking for people? The thing I'm most excited about yeah. is the community participation officers, Okay, what we call CPOs. And we're going to have them on later this month, I think so it'll are. be. That's fantastic. But I would like you to explain briefly what they do. So the charter has a big emphasis on outreach to the public. And the community, and they had called for a community participation officer, but I envision that as being not just one person who happens to have a really broad skill set. But I've chosen three people who are already on staff, um, who each are uh, serving as a team of community participation officers, and um, you know, they're uh, three people who have. Um, Diverse views of the uh, diverse opinions, diverse parts of the the community that they're part of. Uh, two of them are coaches. They all have children in the school district. Um, when you when you're a coach and you have kids, that means you're hyper organized, uh -huh. and so they are people who are go out and get them. And that's one of their things. It's improved communication to the public. Uh, one is our communications officer, and 
She is doing a lot in ramping up our social media and um, going to where people are. And so uh, these three women are just powerhouses. And it's just, that's, I think that's probably the most exciting thing that's happening in our town government. So that's now. really great. Well, uh, I was going to say that that's really great because you have existing staff mm -hmm. as opposed to going out and posting one new job right. and investing all of that responsibility and authority to to try to develop those functions that that set of functions in one person and you've spread it across three existing people who have some experience in town government mm -hmm. who reach into different parts of the community mm -hmm. and you didn't add to the bottom line of the budget right three all three went to uh, col college here um, you know one grew up here as a child um, and um, so it, yeah it, it just brings a, a real um, interesting and exciting way to engage the public. That's really terrific. And on, and on the show where we have them on, which is I think going to be in a few weeks, yeah. we'll, we'll have them explain what their functions are. But mm -hmm. basically this was uh, an innovation that was included in the charter, was. which was really designed to create a robust and dynamic civic engagement right. capacity and interaction between the government and the people of the community. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now uh, what's your role around legislation? So the legislation is done by the council itself. And some of these things we're still working out. It, you know, some of the councilors say that we're building the, the plane as we fly it. Mm -hmm. You know, in some ways it feels like. That's been said many times yeah. on, so, on this so show. I, I was thinking about this. It feels like we have a new baby and we've cleaned it up and it looks presentable, but now it's starting to, to walk and we're, we're saying, well, well, be careful here, be careful here because we're we're going to stumble, and but we'll, we're figuring it, figuring it out. The council is 13 talented people who bring a, a wide range of, of, of experiences to the table. Some have not been involved in government before, so there's a lot of education. Some have been involved for a long time, um, so it's a really nice balance. And the key, I think, is that they really like each other, which I think mm -hmm. is kind of um, nobody knew and they are building a relationship with each other. And I think that's the most positive aspect of the mm -hmm. council so far. So you worked with town meeting 240 or so people. Mm -hmm. You worked with the select board, five individual mm -hmm. active members. And now you've got a panel of 13. How is that different? So it's, um, for the town staff, it's much more challenging in a lot of ways. At town meeting, it was a def defined period of time an article came up or a budget came up, they had to make a decision that night. They would not adjourn until they made a decision. This is a much more iterative process where if the council's not satisfied, they'll send staff back and say, we need more information on this or that or the mm -hmm. other thing. I think it's a stronger form of government. I sort of felt that previously, but it, now that I'm in it, I'm experiencing that it's more demanding on staff in a good way. Uh, we're being held more accountable and the expectations are going to be higher because uh, these are individuals who, who it's, for many of them, it's a full-time job mm -hmm. to be part of this government. And it shouldn't have to be because <laughs> it's too much of a commitment because we want anybody to be able to participate. Um, but they take it very seriously and they have high standards. But that also means that because they're having that kind of interaction on the policy, policy level yeah. with the staff, they're getting detail that they need in order to make good decisions. So, yeah. And that's part of the strength of this, even though it's going to cause, it's going to create more work. Mm -hmm. But the end product is going to be better, which means it's going to work better in the end, which then may mean that some time that you would have spent further down the road trying to fix problems and trying to deal with chaos that might have been otherwise mm -hmm. created gets eliminated. So maybe it's uh, sort of um, uh, front end loaded as opposed to mm -hmm. um, doing a lot of uh, repair work further down the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think there's a perfect form of government. Um, there's a lot of examples of this form of government out there, uh, so, but Amherst is unique. And I think everybody who's you watching think? this, totally unique. <laughs> I have experience in multiple cities, and this place is much different. Mm -hmm. um, and, and mostly in a good way because uh, we've been doing uh, interviews of people who want to be our, on our Energy and Climate Action Committee, and yeah. there's so much talent that's, right. that's marbled through this town. And 
people are engaged and um, and but and the values of the community are very strongly especially articulated in the charter about we want better engagement and more engagement which I really appreciate so speaking of the charter um, and surprises things that you didn't anticipate mm -hmm. that um, were either very positive and beneficial, some of mm -hmm. which you've started to talk about, mm -hmm. and others that maybe were unanticipated that need to be thought about because it, it may not work as well as was mm -hmm. imagined because there's a lot of really great ideas, mm -hmm. but many of them have never been in practice in this community for sure and maybe nowhere else. Mm -hmm. So having a, um, the best example so far has been the public forum on the budget Mm -hmm. The concept, I think, from the charter was to engage the public before the town manager set the, the, the budget. So you want the, the public should be coming in and saying what, they, what their values are, what their priorities are. And one of the things that the charter put in is that 50% of the time had to be spent listening to the public. And I think that was to put a metric in there to make sure that uh, Councilors or the town manager wasn't bloviating and just soaking up all the time, but that you, it was really about enforcing listening practices. Mm -hmm. What happened is that uh, you make a presentation, and it's a, say it's a 20, 30 minute presentation, and then there's 20 minutes of comment, but we can't adjourn the meeting until we've allowed another 10 minutes or whatever time, and so people are sitting there quietly because we're under listening to, to nothing to nothing and um it was just a little a little bit of awkwardness i think yeah. part of it we own that because um you know we could have done a better job at reaching out to the public maybe there's a different way to structure it to engage the public you know i think there's been a lot of positive feedback on how the school district did their listening sessions that was a different you weren't people sitting in an auditorium raising their hand to be recognized. It was everybody was engaged around the table and multiple tables. So mm -hmm. there's other things that we can learn from that. And uh, another uh, option might be shorter presentations. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to the town manager. And I don't know if that's an option. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but also further down the road, <clears throat> excuse me, the chart is going to get reviewed. Mm -hmm. And at that point, that might be a type of problem that could be corrected in a uh, revision of the sure. charter, but that's years away. And yep. in the meantime, you have to uh, follow the charter mm -hmm. and, and importantly, follow the spirit of the charter. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this may be sort of off the wall. Is there, is there anything that, that uh, jumps out at you from the experience with the charter uh, that um, you want to particularly highlight as being a really great innovation? Well, I think we talked about the community participation officers as yeah. being a really good innovation. I think aligning the policy making under the council and having the executive report to the council and be subject to the approval of the council, that's another good thing. So I think we have a more clarity of vision. In our minds as staff, we, as we're talk thinking about things, we want them to set the big picture and then we will carry out the mission. Um, but it's really great to say the buck stops with the council. You tell us what, what the goals are for the community. It's our job to implement. And uh, you didn't mention in the list of positive innovations, uh, but you mentioned earlier um, the uh, provision in the charter that uh, I don't remember the name of it. It comes out of Cambridge, and it's the... Participatory of, budgeting. Ah, the participatory budgeting committee. So, um, do you see that as uh, uh, an exciting innovation here? And can you also, I know Andy's coming on, mm -hmm. Andy Steinberg, the finance chair, in, in a week or two, mm -hmm. but can you give us any insight into how that's coming together? Because people have to start preparing and thinking about right. how to use that tool because it goes into effect with this budget, does it not? No, it doesn't. It does so, not. So what the charter calls for is for the council to set up a participatory budgeting commission to study how to how do it. How to do it. Oh, And they have a goodness. reporting date, I think it's December of Good. this year, to say here's what, how, here's what you think we think you need to do. And Good. it's a recommendation to the council. Um, we do a little snippet of that by having a... a community request form. If someone has a capital project they, they think isn't on the list of our capital plans, um, that they can submit that um, to the through the website. And we had 
six of those presented this morning to the Joint Capital Planning Committee of different things that people felt like the town wasn't addressing, and these are th ideas. One was for renovations to the Cherry Hill Golf Course, one was for renovations to the North Amherst Library, road projects, things like that. And so people can write this in, submit it, and they'll get a hearing before the Joint Capital Planning Committee. And that's a, I think that's one piece of this. But participatory budgeting is a, is a, it's new. Cambridge, I think, is the only community in, in this that I've heard of that yeah. does. Um, and they allocate a certain sum of money out of the budget and say, you guys decide how you want to spend it. And yeah, and that was my concern was we're getting further and further along in the budget process. Mm -hmm. And if a pool of money was set aside and there wasn't enough time to engage the community right. and to make sensible decisions, that we might be uh, in a really tough spot yeah. in this budgeting cycle. So this is a planning year yes. for that and function. And ranked choice voting. And ranked choice voting. Mm -hmm. And have, uh, has that committee been set up? No, not yet. That's, uh, and do they have a, f a deadline that they, you can recall? I think recall? they're both in December as deadlines to do the Of work. this year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those committees uh, are going to have quite a, an active summer and fall mm -hmm. uh, to meet those uh, deadlines. Mm -hmm. um, economic development, can you uh, give me some reflection on how you see as town manager, having worked with people in the community on various things mm -hmm. that were in the uh, nature of economic development, now with the new town structure, and I know there's talk about creating an economic development mm -hmm. committee. Yeah. So how, do, how does this look from the town manager's point of view as a function in town and how you think the new government is uh, going to interact with that? Mm -hmm. So the town has been forward looking for many years and has a master plan. And that's when I came here, I read the master plan to understand what the mission was of the, of the town. And what the town basically said is we love our rural character. And oftentimes, I went to college here, so when people said, well, what's different? And I said, basically, the town looks kind of the same, at least on my way, my way out to Hampshire College. The farmland is still there. So the town's done a remarkable job at preserving landscapes and um, vistas. Um, but the town said, but we need growth to sustain our operations. And so they said, concentrate our development into town centers. And that's been a real focus of development downtown, North Amherst, um, East East Amherst, Pomeroy Village, Atkins Corner, those are the areas that we want to direct development into. Um, so those, there obviously have been um, development downtown and that has had mixed reviews. Some people love it, some people don't. Um, but the economic benefit to the town is, is um, unmistakable. You know, one property that may have paid by a factor of 10 uh, will have paid more taxes. And that is revenue coming into the town year after year after year. So the, uh, uh, the town council is presumably working on conceptualizing the charge of the Economic Development Committee, mm -hmm. the kind of membership that they're looking for. Uh, do you have any sense of uh, timetable from conversations with the president? No. So what the, what the town, what the council, I think, will finalize on Monday is um, they've done the, the hard work of basically creating the four major committees of the council. Mm -hmm. It's four big buckets that when something comes into them, they have to put it into a bucket. So the finance committee is required by the charter. So anything f money goes into that. The, um, they have a sort of a legislative committee called the uh, Governance Organization and Legislation Legislative, Committee, yep. the, the GOL committee. They're, so that's legislation, finance. They have, they're important on appointments. So they have an um, um, uh, outreach, uh, communications, and appointments committee. Appointments, so yep. that's the third bucket. And then they have this fourth budget bucket that they're going to create called Community Resources Committee. And that's going to be for land use issues. That's how I oh. see it, at least. So anything with land use will go to, so they, now they have, I think they've got the structure. And it's not unusual for cities to have that kind of structure. Mm -hmm. But the council now has a place to put almost every issue that comes before them. And they can say, we can delve it, delegate it out to one of their committees. So with the f would a fifth then potentially be economic development? No, I think that they've or decided they will... to separate out the economic development to be just a town committee, but not a council committee. Ah, okay. So these, these four committees I just said are committees of councilors. Of the council. Right? Okay. There are 39 committees. Otherwise, this would be a 40th committee okay. to focus on economic development. And the climate change and energy committee that they're creating is um, a town committee? It's a town committee, okay. but it happens to have two councilors that sit on it. Okay. And so we're going to see some hybrids um, I think so. as, as they 
as the council figures out we want to do work in a particular area, mm -hmm. they also have to think about what's the structure and where does it belong. Mm -hmm. Is it a multi-member committee? Is it a town council committee? Exactly. Is it uh, something else? And mm -hmm. So, very good. Well, um, we are coming toward the end of our uh, time together. Uh, any final reflections on s this transition and how it's going? Well, first, credit to the council and the president in particular, who's they've put an enormous amount of time to build this government, and it takes it's a lot. And I watched your first show, and you laughed, you almost scoffed when she said, <laughs> "Oh, we'll be done in a few I was months." Trying, and you I said, was "No, trying it's trying to be." controlled about it but I I heard her say that it's and I thought years. oh my god it's gonna take <laughs> you know a long right? long time so it's it's years um, and it can be anywhere from uh, some of the issues are just so interesting like how how do they address each other you know yeah counselor so-and-so mr. Yeah. or ms. so-and-so they finally said this is too awkward for us we're just gonna say our first names because right. we like each other we're gonna do that <laughs> It's it's really interesting to see the dynamics play out of how it's doing. yeah so because you're standing up something from from total scratch yeah. you, you've got the blueprint in the charter but there's a zillion things that have to are be they done. going to have assigned seats or not when or they not, sit down right. but it's a privilege to be part of this it's so thrilling it's yeah. just a lot of work right. for everybody well you've always been high energy and you don't seem to have lost <laughs> any of it uh, from this and uh, you still have a full head of hair. <laughs> <laughs> And you don't look like you're not sleeping. So thanks for all the great work that you're doing Good. helping make our government a success. Thank you, Stan. I appreciate it. So thank that. you. And thank you for watching us. And we'll see you again soon.